cDNA cloning and first we will focus on the properties of cDNA. Previously we discussed that how genomic DNA libraries can be created and you have the idea that genomic libraries they represent the whole genome genome of a particular organism and it contain all the recombinant molecules that are present uh, in that organism but on the other hand cDNA it is prepared from RNA populations uh, if you remember I think uh, in previous lectures maybe uh, when we were discussing about the cutting and joining techniques we discuss uh, the cloning or the joining of uh, cDNA by homopolymeric telling that uh, cDNA it can be produced uh, by subjecting the messenger RNA to reverse transcriptase. There are certain uh, viruses uh, that are that contain RNA as their genome and they are called as RNA viruses and the most common example is retroviruses. Retroviruses have the ability to convert its RNA into DNA because they contain an enzyme which is called as reverse transcriptase. And this ability of the reverse transcriptase it can be used in the laboratory to produce a copy of DNA from RNA which is called as the cDNA. And then this cDNA it can be used to construct genomic libraries. cDNA has certain advantages as compared to genomic DNA. The main advantage is that the cDNA they lacks intron that are the non-coding region. Although these introns they are uh, they are not mainly present in bacteria but they are present in higher organism and if you analyze a gene of higher organism these introns uh, they may be present anywhere within the gene ye gene ke darmiyan bhi ho sakte hain as an intergenic region ya ye 5 prime end ya 3 prime end dono sides pe ho sakte hain aur jab gene ki transcription hoti hai to ye bhi saath mein transcribe ho jate hain to messenger rna jo nucleus mein banta hai usme uh, intron bhi hote hain along with exon that are the coding region so intron are there along with exon when messenger rna it is first synthesized then in the next step the processing it is there uh, by which the intron they are removed from the messenger rna and this process by which intron they are removed from the messenger RNA they are uh, this process it is called as splicing. So after splicing the messenger RNA uh, now uh, it is lacking intron and it is the coding region and it is well suited uh, for cloning. Now if we analyze some genes of higher organisms like the human like uh, the dystrophin gene that encode dystrophin protein of the cytoplasm and this gene it is very very large like it is 2.5 megabase contained number of base pairs so it contain uh, around more than 70 uh, uh, types of introns and around it may represent 99% uh, portion of that gene of the dystrophin or in other words we can say that 0.08% of the genomic DNA of human it is represented by this gene so now you may have the idea that this dystrophin gene of human uh, it is very very uh, large and when we will attempt to clone it by constructing genomic library because of the huge size it is not possible an appropriate strategy is that we can uh, convert this DNA first uh, into messenger RNA and then into uh, cDNA. When it is converted into cDNA, then the size of the cDNA it is around 
uh, 11 kilo bases and now it is appropriate to clone and these 11 kilo base pairs uh, dystrophin uh, cDNA now it can code 3500 amino acids of uh, dystrophin uh, protein so this is one of the advantage that if the gene size it is very very large then it can be converted into small size by converting its respective messenger RNA into the cDNA another uh, application is that uh, when its expression is needed in host organism like the bacteria then the protein product it can be detected by using immunological uh, techniques and when this cDNA it is cloned then uh, and then later on uh, sequenced uh, then we can compare that okay this portion it belongs to exome and here introns may be present